Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you guys are interested in being a part of a helpful, friendly vermicompost community, you are in the right place. Today, I'm going to talk about how worm bins interact with the carbon footprint, which some people believe is important. And I'll kind of go through the entire uh, point of the whole carbon footprint, as well as how that relates to our worm bins. Is it good? Is it bad? Or, you know, what is the story with that? Today we're going to look in on the European Nightcrawlers, and as you can see, I have my trusty dusty screen here, as well as a little bit of my castings on top here that could use to be sorted. Now, looking in here, I am seeing some roly polies, but I am not seeing any, any worms. And I'm kind of looking through here just a little bit to see if there is any plastic that I need to pick out. It might have come from an envelope or something in the past. Who knows? And then we're just gonna put the overs back there in the feeding zone so that they can take another hit at it. Got some peach pits in here. Those are gonna be a while. If I ever remember to bring my pliers into the basement, then maybe we can break them open and expedite matters. But at this point, we're just gonna have to throw them back at the beginning. I think most of this stuff on top here is just me making a mistake and throwing paper over the top of the bin when I didn't mean to. Some, I have uh, a tray that goes on top of this and the uh, some of the plants that I'm overwintering in the basement, like my figs and my peppers, uh, were sitting on top of here and I probably moved some paper along with it just a little. We're not going to get a big harvest because I have had the plants on top of here. It has been keeping the moisture up a little bit, but as I've said before, it's a marathon. It's not a speed race. All right, let me get, see if I can get one more handful out here. Good time to get rid of any of the stickers. Really pulleys like, hey, I'm in for the ride. Okay, and there are some little clumps I can break up there, but for the most part, this is hard, crunchy stuff that needs to uh, go back. All right, well, not the best harvest in the world, but harvest nonetheless. Every little bit counts. All right, so talking about the carbon footprint. If anybody uh, has opinions or feelings on the, the carbon footprint, put those comments below. But I'm gonna go through it as I understand what the carbon footprint is and does. So for the most part, when we're talking about our carbon footprint, everybody thinks of, I'm driving my SUV, I'm eating steak dinners, and I'm making the planet a worse place. But it's not just that simple. Most of the time when they're talking about the carbon footprint and sustainability, most of what is considered the bad stuff is transportation related, simply because of all the effects of driving. So when people talk about the, uh, the new topic lately has been there was an article that came out saying that home gardeners are bad for the environment and that their increase their uh, carbon footprint is higher than industrialized farming but that's making some assumptions most of which is that we're not making our own and that we are not trucking them from walmart who is trucking them from god knows where to our garden so one of the things that we can talk about is how the worms are if you have a worm farm, they are mitigating some of the carbon footprint problems, which is you're taking all of your food waste, cardboard, paper, whatever, and you're just trucking it over to your worm bin or your compost pile, and you're tossing it in. There are no garbage trucks involved. There isn't any um, garbage bag, no plastic bag that you put it in. All you've got is you and probably a stock pot and tossing it in your worm bin. So that is one way that we're reducing our carbon footprint is that the, the things that are going in our worm bins are not going in the landfill. So one, you're not taking up landfill space, but also the important part, especially for people who don't live near a landfill, um, you're really using a lot of uh, truck power to get everything to that landfill. So that's one of the ways that the worm farms are or helping with your, your carbon footprint. Okay, looks like these guys are not moving along very far, so looks like this part is not 
ready to harvest. I've got a lot of worms up in here. Okay, I'm gonna flip you around to the feeding part of the bin and we'll talk about the other half of that carbon footprint problem. Okay, it's been about four weeks since we've been in here, since we uh, fed them the uh, lentil soup and the rice and beans. I think we might have even put some uh, cabbage slaw in here. So let me move all this stuff away and then we can look and see what kind of food is left and we might even get a worm ball. So back to the carbon footprint and looking at all of the things that goes into it. Like I said, there is the, the part where you're trucking things here and there. You don't have to purchase amendments for your soil. You're, you're making them right in your own basement or your garage or your yard or, or wherever that is. And then, so you're kind of mitigating the transportation on both ends. So you're not spending money to take things to the garbage. And then you're also not spending money going to the store and purchasing all of your uh, amendments for your soil. That's a pretty decent worm ball there. Good worms. Look at that. What good babies. So you're taking, or at least I am taking all of my Amazon boxes and, and whatever else comes in the mail that I've purchased, any kind of food waste, any sort of uh, paper recycling my worms get, all of that goes into me reducing my carbon footprint. So one of the other things that is, is true about leaving things out of the landfill is that a lot of times the rotting food in the landfill is actually creating methane which is much worse than the carbon dioxide that our little worms breathe out and all of the other aerobic organisms that breathe out in the way of carbon dioxide. So even though it is being composted and it is degrading, the outputs of worm composting as far as volatile organic compounds are not as bad as it would be if they were being turned into methane. So let me go ahead and get these guys some food. I did put all of the crunchy stuff from my harvest in here, as well as all the dry paper from the top. Okay, so today it's gonna be a whole lot of potatoes and avocado shells, a couple of unbroken uh, eggshells here. So this should possibly, since everything's been frozen, hopefully it'll go pretty fast with the exception of the avocado business. Uh, so let me, I don't know if that'll, yeah, we'll have to wait for the worms to pick it off. All right, so last but not least, I just wanted to put some numbers to back that up. Some people actually say you can reduce your carbon footprint by 50% by composting your own items instead of putting them in the trash. Okay, so here we are. We've got about one gallon of food and about three gallons of new bedding that was added. Only took out about uh, two pints of castings out today, but that's okay, we've still got time. Let me know your thoughts on the carbon footprint as it relates to gardening and worm farmer. Tell me what you have heard out there. Okay, so well, if you wanna see more of the European Nightcrawlers, I have a playlist right over there, and if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right over here. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.